Okay, so let us talk about neonatal abdominal radiograph. So this is an abdominal radiograph of neonates who presented with vomiting. The orogastric tube is in proper position. There is multiple dilated bowel loops all over the abdomen. And we can see there is no rectal gas. Both inguinal regions are clear. No evidence of hernial sac. Normal sacral spine. No evidence of sacral agenesis. There is no sign of pneumatosis intestinalis or portal venous gases. No sign of pneumoperitoneum and no evidence of peritoneal calcification. In conclusion, this is a case of neonate with dilated bowel loop and absence of rectal gas, which are indicating distal bowel obstruction and no sign of bowel ischemia or perforation. To take this further, I would like to do rectal enema with water soluble contrast as a diagnostic and maybe therapeutic. Here the presentation is finished. Then the examiner will show you an enema study. So let us see how we can deal with it. Uh, there is four differential diagnoses of distal bowel obstruction in neonatal case. And we can divide them according to the caliber of the colon. So if there is microcolon, this can be either meconium ileus or ileal alteresia. Or if the colon is normal or dilated, so it's either Hirschsprung disease or meconium plaque. Those are two cases of microcolon, and we can see how the colon diameter comparing to the small bowl in the background. Here and here. This is the colon, and this is the small bowl. So in case of meconium ileus, as in this case. The contrast will reflex into dilated terminal ileum with multiple feeling defects that representing fecal matter and giving soap bubble appearance. While in ileal atresia, the reflex will go into small caliber ileum, as you can see here. So the key feature is the distal ileum. If it's dilated, so it's most probably meconium ileus. If it's small caliber, blunted end, so it's most probably ileal atresia. Also, as we know that air fluid level is more common in ileal atresia rather in meconium ileus, but this feature is not really helpful because we are not doing an erect radiograph in the unit. Now let us see the next category, which dilated colon or normal caliber colon. As we can see here, the colon is much larger than the background small bowel. Also in this case, very large sigmoid comparing with dilated small bowel loops. So this is a case of Hirschsprung disease and this is a case of functional immaturity of the colon. So what we can see in Hirschsprung disease is reverse sigmoid rectal ratio. That means the rectum is much smaller than the sigmoid, which is the reverse the normal. And we can see transitional zone between the small and dilated segment. And also we can see, let us zoom, we can see the sawtooth appearance here uh, in agangolinic segment. So those are the typical features of Hirschsprung disease. In case of meconium plug, the colon is dilated and contains fecal matter, which are appear as feeling defect. There is no transition zone, and the rectal sigmoid ratio is preserved. We can see how the rectum is dilated comparing with the sigmoid. And finally, the contrast enema usually therapeutic for those cases. So in conclusion, uh, during the viva, we have to spot the presence of obstruction and the absence of rectal gas indicating distal bowel obstruction. Next step, we have to give water-soluble enema, then categorize according to the presence of micro, colon, or dilated colon. And it's very important before to start the enema, we have to exclude the presence of bowel ischemia or bowel perforation, look for hernial orifices, and look for sacrum. Here the presentation is finished, and thank you for watching.